Welcome to the video protocol for the cell block for designing microRNA specific cDNA and PCR primers. And the reason you would use this protocol would be to, in the next steps, amplify endogenous microRNAs that are in your cells of interest to measure their expression to see if any of your microRNAs of interest might be upregulated or downregulated in the cells that you're working with. So before we get to the protocol itself, I'd like to give everybody a reminder about what microRNAs are. So many of us are familiar with the central dogma where we have DNA, which is contained in the nucleus and encodes genes. And some of those genes are expressed as proteins. And the way that's done is through transcription of the gene into messenger RNA. That messenger RNA gets exported from the nucleus into the cytoplasm where it's translated into a protein. Now, microRNAs are also transcribed from the DNA first as long molecules that then get processed into their final form, which is a short, single-stranded 21 to 23 nucleotide RNA molecule. And the function of a microRNA is to negatively regulate gene expression. And they do this by binding to the three prime untranslated region of a messenger RNA and downregulating its expression either through degradation of that messenger RNA or through inhibition of translation of that messenger RNA into a protein. And as you might suspect, one microRNA can actually have many different targets. And what has been found in research is that if a microRNA binds with partial complementarity to its target, it tends to block the translation of that messenger RNA into protein, whereas if there's perfect complementarity between the microRNA and the target gene, that RNA gets, that messenger RNA gets cleaved. A lot of these cell blocks work within the context of cancer, though microRNAs are important in many different diseases, but even just within the chronic disease of cancer, and this is a very abbreviated list, we can see that microRNAs can play roles in lots of important cell functions, including cell growth and proliferation, invasion, hypoxia, cell cycle regulation, migration, and many more. So the kind of to outline the steps of this overall protocol, first, what you would need is RNA. So before we can look at the expression levels of these microRNAs in the cell, we need to actually get RNA. This can be done very easily using triazole reagent. Pictured here is a dish of cells that you can directly isolate RNA from using the triazole reagent. And that will isolate all the RNAs in the cell, including the messenger RNAs, the microRNAs, as well as other types of RNAs in the cell. You could also use an RNA or a microRNA purification kit. So any way that you'd like to get purified RNA is fine, but that will need to be obtained before completing this protocol. After your RNA is isolated, then you're going to make the cDNA for that microRNA. And this particular video protocol is to show you how to design these very specific primers that you will use to make the cDNA or copy DNA of the microRNA and then amplify it using polymerase chain reaction. So if we want to visualize this, we have our microRNA. And the problem with trying to isolate these out of the solution with a mixture of many different RNAs is that they're really small. So here we have our small microRNA in blue. This protocol utilizes a stem loop primer pictured in black that folds over on itself and has a three prime exposed region. And that three prime exposed overhang is what's actually going to bind to the specific microRNA of interest to initiate the reverse transcription. And what this will do is by using this gene-specific, or in this case, microRNA-specific reverse primer for your cDNA reaction, you're going to enrich for any microRNAs that have that sequence, including the one you're interested in and maybe any related family members. Following the cDNA step, we, in order to visualize our microRNA products, we will need to use polymerase chain reaction to amplify them. And so what we do is we design a forward primer that is specific to our microRNA of interest, and we use a universal reverse primer, or URP, that actually binds to the stem loop sequence in order to create a larger amplicon that should be specific to your microRNA of interest, but large enough to visualize on a gel. 
So this cell block, which is the primer design cell block, should be used in conjunction with the cDNA and PCR amplification of microRNA cell block that can also be found. What you might see after you complete these protocols, in other words, once you design your primers, carry out the cDNA synthesis reaction, followed by the PCR reaction, is you'll run your products out on an acrylamide gel, and you'll see something that looks like this. So in this particular example, we're looking at four different cell lines, which are listed at the top. The first two are endometrial cancer cell lines, and the second two are breast cancer cell lines. And we're looking at the expression of a microRNA called MIR200C, which is known to be involved in this process known as epithelial mesenchymal transition, or EMT, which is really important for metastasis or when the cancer spreads to other areas of the body. And what we can see is the relative expression of this microRNA in duplicate samples for each cell line. So as you can see, this microRNA is expressed most strongly in HEC1A cells, followed by MCF7, less so in the Ishikawa cells and really not expressed at all in the MCF7M cells. And you can follow up with ImageJ software or other imaging software to quantitate your band intensity in order to get a more specific result of how much more your microRNA or how much less your microRNA is expressed in one cell line versus another. So how do we design the primers? The first step is to go to the microRNA database known as MIRBase. And what we can do here is to type in our microRNA of interest. So let's say we're interested in MIR200C. We can type that in the box and click go. And what we'll get is a list of the MIR200C microRNAs in all different species because this database is not just specific to humans. But if we scroll down, we can find HSA-MIR-200C and HSA stands for Homo sapiens. And so since we're looking at human cancer cells, this is our microRNA of interest. Once we get to this page, we're gonna get a lot of information about this microRNA. So it'll tell us again the species and the microRNA identity. MicroRNAs are first transcribed from the genome as stem loops, and then they're further processed into their mature form. So if we continue to scroll down, we see mature sequence for HSA, again, Homo sapiens, MIR200C, 5P. If we keep scrolling, we also see this other designation of 3P. If you're not sure which microRNA of interest is the one you want to investigate, a good clue is to look at their other IDs. So if we look down at the bottom of the screen, MIR200C3P is also known just as MIR200C, whereas MIR200C5P is known as MIR200C star. In general, the star sequences are less abundant in the cell. And usually if you're looking for the microRNA of interest, you're looking for the non-star version. That could be on the 3P arm or the 5P arm that just designates which side of the stem loop it was processed from. But for our purposes, we're going to use the information for the MIR200C, again, the non-star version. And what we want to grab from this page is the mature sequence, which could be seen here in pink. Then you're going to want to copy and paste that mature sequence into a Word document or something else that you can work from. So I've copied and pasted it here. You can see the mature microRNA sequence there. And you'll notice the last six nu nucleotides are in a blue font. The important thing about designing this stem loop RT primer for your cDNA reaction is to make sure that these last six nucleotides are of the reverse complement to each other. What you'll see for the stem loop RT primer sequence is nucleotides in black and all caps. These nucleotides will be the same for every single stem loop primer that you design. The only thing that will change are those last six nucleotides. And you want those last six nucleotides to be the reverse complement of the last six nucleotides of the mature microRNA sequence. One other thing you'll notice is that in the RNA sequence, there's U's, where in the primer sequence, there's T's. That's because our primers are made out of DNA. So anywhere that you would have a U, just make sure that you input a T. Once you develop your stem loop RT primer sequence, you can conduct the cDNA protocol, which is in the next cell block. And you also wanna design your 
primers for the next step, which would be the polymerase chain reaction. So in order to design your microRNA-specific PCR primers, you're going to use that same mature microRNA sequence that we found on Mirbase. And what you're going to do for the forward primer is you're actually going to use the identical sequence of the microRNA, and you're just going to replace the U's with T's. The reverse primer actually will be the same for any microRNAs that you're looking at because this reverse primer binds to the stem loop portion of your RT primer that you used in the last step. So we call this a universal reverse primer. It's going to be the same for any microRNA you're looking at. So the only primer you will have to order new each time is for your forward primer, which would be specific to your microRNA of interest. So once again, just to recap, once you design your primers and synthesize your cDNA that is specific to your microRNA and conduct your polymerase chain reaction, you can run those products out on a 10% acrylamide gel. This one was stained with cyber gold, and it can be visualized using a UV box, a blue light box, or a gel doc system. And what you'll see should be bands around 75 base pairs, so make sure you use a low molecular weight DNA marker. And this will allow you to see the relative expression of endogenous microRNAs in your